But I want to go back to the issue that Senator Chuck Schumer is pushing. There will be a vote tomorrow on a bill on the Senate floor which they seek to codify Roe v. Wade. Now, they've already voted on this, and it's gone down. They, they, only have, they have to have 60 votes. They, only, uh, they probably won't even get 50 uh, to move it forward. But I want to play, another, I want to play this clip again of uh, Senator Schumer, clip two. The vote will shine light on every single one of us. It will be like a floodlight, and we'll each have to make our position clear. The consequences of this vote will stay with us for the rest of our time in office. The nation will be watching. <laughs> I mean, there's truth there. The nation is watching. And I do hope, I hope, and I pray that the consequences will stick with them for the rest of their time in offer, office. Senator uh, Richard Blumenthal of uh, Connecticut said this, he, quote, he uh, t- talking about the vote coming up tomorrow, he said, quote, every senator will be held accountable. Reproductive rights will be on the ballot this November, end quote. That, that this is what this is all about. I mean, they know they can't advance this bill, but they're trying to message to their base. But this is what I would say, uh, Senator Blumenthal. Yes, every senator will be held accountable. Both parties will be held accountable because on the ballot this fall will be death and life. That's what this is about. This is not about reproductive rights. Oh, that sounds so nice. Let's talk about what this really is. This is about continuing 50 years of what the court has imposed upon this nation, and it is abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy. And now we see states like Maryland and California that want to go beyond birth. We're about four countries that are this extreme on abortion. And this is what the Democratic Party in the United States stand for, stands for, and they want you to pay for it. But to, to, here with me to talk just a little bit more about what this bill actually does so that you know that this is not hyperbole when we're talking about it being extreme uh, is Connor Simmelsberger. He is the director of federal affairs and the life and human dignity here at the Family Research Council. Connor, welcome back to the program. Great to be back, Tony. All right. We just touched on this earlier with Senator Holly, but go into some of the aspects of this bill that really illustrates just how extreme it is. Yeah, what the, as Chuck Schumer says, the codify Roe bill, uh, it, it's first just good to understand what does that mean? Even if this was a bill that just codified Roe, what would that mean? And it's exactly what you explained. It's abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy. That's what Roe allows. And that's what Roe has put on our, uh, all 50 states for the last uh, 50 years. And so they don't just want to codify that in the statute so uh, that the states, the people don't have any say over their abortion laws. They want to go a step further to say, if you're a state and you've passed laws over the last 50 50 years for ultrasound requirements, uh, parental notice, uh, parental consent, even uh, sex selection abortion prohibitions. Uh, Sorry, but those laws no longer apply, and you, all 50 states, have to accept this radical abortion ideology that the Democrat Party has attached themselves to. So, so Connor, let's be very, very clear here. This is not maintaining status quo. This is about, as you said, taking a huge eraser and just erasing all all pro-life legislation that has become law in the last 49 years and just removing it from the books at the state level and saying, this is what you will have to live with, abortion through all nine months of pregnancy. That's exactly right. You know, Senator Marshall out of Kansas was on the Senate floor just a little while ago, who's who's an OBGYN himself, and he, he put it perfectly. This puts folks like himself in jeopardy. Those doctors, uh, nurse practitioners that deal with this type of care, uh, that go into this field because they want to bring life into the world, uh, th- they're right in the crosshairs. All these conscious protection laws in the state level, even the federal level, that have been enacted again. Uh, whenever they want to codify this right, any objectors to that right, even a medical professional, maybe have to forced to participate in this horrific practice. Now, do we have some resources for, uh, for folks on this uh, issue? We do. Uh, we hope that you take action. Like we always say, you know, contact your senators. Uh, Tony has said that they've already voted, but we need to make sure that uh, any, no senators switch their votes. So uh, you can check out our, our action website to, to get details on how to contact your legislator. We also have some talking points that explain all the details of the bill at frc.org slash codify row. All right. And um, I think we might have, uh, let me see, if we don't have it, we'll get it up at TonyPerkins.com or you can go to FRCAction. 
dot org and contact your senators. As as Connor was saying, they they voted on this previously. We don't anticipate. Do, I mean, do we anticipate anybody changing their vote on this from the previous vote just a couple it's months ago? It's really just a plug in place of it was February the last vote, and I'll just say that Senator Bob Casey of my home state, who was sort of tangentially danced around the issue last vote, he just put out a statement, not just reaffirming his vote to vote for cloture, which is the vote tomorrow, but he said if we would actually move to a final passage vote, uh, Senator Casey, Mr. Pro Life Senator from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania said he would actually vote for this final bill to pass. You know, that, that shows just how extreme the Democratic Party has become on this, because his father, who had been the governor of Pennsylvania, was really kind of the last of the pro-life Democrats, kind of squeezed out of his own party because of his strong pro-life stand as a Democrat and his son running on his coattails or his legacy as a, as a pro-life uh, elected official has uh, been anything but. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's it's sad state of affairs, but at the same time, uh, you see the the strength of now the the Republican Party just embracing the life issue uh, from all levels down. What we had with President Trump here in D.C. Uh, and now in our Congress in the state, so that's going to be a big issue, and that's what we want to continue to bring more pro-life leaders here to D.C. and across the states to really uh, continue to promote this issue. Well, and Connor, speaking of that, I know this isn't uh, this isn't your area of expertise at FRC, but uh, you know, just looking at the polling data. This is not a winning issue for Democrats. The American people are not with them when it comes to abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy. So is this simply this, you know, trying to uh, pacify th this extreme base that the Democratic Party now has? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, we looked at a lot of this polling data, and I just have to say I can't underscore enough how much the American people are on the life side. When the Democrats give you one choice, you got one choice now on the life issue if you're a Democrat, and that's abortion on demand. That's it, because they've had to drift so far to the left that any other deviation from that, even a restriction at viability, which is what Roe allowed, is far out of step with where the Democrats are. And the polling data just shows time and time again that not just that the life issue is winning, but when framed correctly, people don't want what Roe v. Wade says, which is nine unelected justices deciding our abortion laws. The people want to decide. Uh, and that's where we need to go and to, to fight for a day that uh, one day when all life is protected in our society. But that's just an issue that the polling data, they're running scared from. And so they unleashed the winds, as Chuck Schumer said, with this leaked opinion. And it doesn't seem to be paying off for them politically. All right. Uh, Connor Simmelsberger, thanks so much for uh, joining us and giving us that update. Always a pleasure, Tony.